Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk through an example for you guys about using scriptable objects in Unity in order to share game settings that you can use to initialize your game. So, as you can see, I have three different difficulty buttons. Easy, Normal, and Hard. So let me go ahead and demo really quick. If I hit Play, you can see that we have three buttons. Easy, Normal, and Hard. So, when I choose the difficulty, the next scene loads immediately. And you can see the money value is set. The max health is set to 500. We have a title name for the difficulty. And we can see the difficulty's enum value represented as a string down here. So what's nice about this is that we can easily have multiple sets of game settings for different difficulties. So if I restart this scene, we can go to normal. And we can see we have different values for money, max health, the title, and the difficulty. And then lastly, hitting play one more time, going to hard, we have no money a max health of 25, the title of masochism, and the difficulty of heart. So let's talk a little bit about how this is set up. So each of the buttons created with the standard UI package for Unity have on-click events set up to call the game loader load mode function. So I have three different versions of this function, which will load the different sets of scriptable object data set for each one. So button two or a button one. <clears throat> so button parentheses one has load mode two, and then the third button has load mode three. So if we look at my game loader game object, we can see that we have three sets of the game settings set in here as references to the files in our assets folder. So we have the easy settings, the normal settings, and the hard settings, and the scene that we want to start the game off with, which is game level one. So if I double click into one of these scriptable objects, we can see that there is four fields set up. But of course, it would be really easy to actually just add in more fields for as much data as you want to start the game with as your game settings. But here we can see I have an enum field, easy, normal, hard, could add extra difficulties if you want to that. The title, so this one was without trying, the max health, and the starting money. If we look at the other settings, we can see a similar setup here. So if we go ahead and take a look at the game settings scriptable object file, we can see that it inherits from scriptable object. We have a create asset menu attribute, which is standard for making it so that you can add a new scriptable object instance to your project uh, by right clicking. And then you find it in the menu, in this case, scriptable objects, tutorial two shared data, and it will give us the default file name of shared data. Maybe I want to rename that to game settings here. So I'll just go ahead and update that to make a little bit more sense. Now with a scriptable object, you can create fields, properties and methods, just like any other C sharp class. But one thing I've been doing lately has been to make my serialized fields private, so that they can only be accessed from within the class. And we show them in the inspector, even though they're private by giving it the serialized field attribute. So I do that for each of them. And then to access the data from other classes that won't be able to change it, but will be able to find the data and use it. We have properties that will return each of these fields. So game difficulty returns underscore game difficulty. Mode title gives us underscore camel case mode title. And then player max health, player max health, and so on and so forth. So if you take a look at the game loader, the load modes will just start the game with one of these settings that we have referenced in the inspector. Those would be the three scriptable objects. And in this case, I take the game instance class and I have a static field game settings, which I set to the game settings passed in. So one of these modes becomes the active game settings when we start the first level of the game. And then I use scene manager load scene to start that scene based on the name of the scene. And then once the scene loads, there are some model behavior scripts, which will access the game instance game settings and then use the properties in them in order to set the texts on the screen, as you saw. So the welcome message will grab the title and set that to the text of TextMess Pro text. Money field will grab the starting money. Max health field grabs the player max health. And the difficulty text will grab the difficulty as an enum and then turn it into a string and add that with the difficulty colon uh, string. So once again, to go quickly through it, we have the first scene, which would presumably be your menu screen. We select the difficulty of the game we want to start, and then we start the game with those settings. And once again, each of these model behavior scripts attached to these different UI elements will grab 
the game settings, find the property that has the data we want and attach those to the screen. Now, as long as you have that static game settings field or some kind of singleton object, which is going to store the active game settings, you'd be able to use that across other objects too. So maybe you have a character in your scene with a model behavior script that needs to know the max health. So you're not setting the max health on the UI, but maybe you just set that property on a mono behavior script attached to your player character, such as the health or the starting health, starting money, whatever. So that in a nutshell is one way that you can use scriptable objects to store game settings. And then when you start your game, you can select which scriptable object you want to use for the active game instance, and then share that data across any object that needs to reference the data. Optionally, once again, limiting it by only having a getter function for your properties so that random objects cannot change the actual game settings. So that once it's there, once it's set up, that's just what the game has. And you can only get the values. You can't just go ahead and set them and change them midway. So I hope that this little tutorial gave you an idea of what you can do with scriptable objects and how you can set them up to be a store for your game settings for different difficulties. I have a link to my Patreon if you want to go ahead and download the assets folder from this project and play around with it or use any of the scripts. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.